of them before this was something I could see running toward. All right then, that gave me an angle to work toward. I needed to find a harmless front for Icon, one that someone without my clearance could access. What I needed to know was what my original would have read, so I could follow her thought process. I'd ask Skyler to turn my access back down for a few minutes, and maybe I'd ask about his action hero experience. I flicked the footage with him into a save bin for later. The next file started playing. It was a teletree of Jonathan. The footage sucked all the oxygen out of the room. He looked exactly the same, rendered in these floating pixels as he did in my memory. Part of me had been terrified that I would find out that I had edited him to be more attractive, but now, there he was, with broad cheekbones and soft round nose, the mop of glossy dark curls which normally fell over his tan forehead had been swept back with gel in his fancy look. A glimmer of silver dusted his lids, and his full lips were just a touch redder than their natural shade. My beloved had a fascination with physical makeup, but only broke out his vintage collection of powders for special occasions. Even before I saw the logo on the teletree, I knew that this was a talk at the Organisation Technologique Internationale. OTI was a global cooperative network that oversaw fair distribution of technology to all peoples. I listened to his soft tenor, letting the familiar sound wrap around me before I finally started listening. And while we all agree that it is important to allow people who do not wish, for whatever reason, to use technology, the freedom to check out, at the same time, we must acknowledge that this risks disenfranchising some citizens. While the obvious concerns revolve around maintaining a robust infrastructure for them independent of nanites, the larger concern is long-term. I'm going to use ICON as an example of why the question of checkouts is not a simple one. Renewal stations make the citizens who use them functionally immortal. As my colleague noted in her presentation earlier, this has been skewing voting rights, and while ICON cites this as one of their grievances, there have been serious governmental efforts to address that. So I think we need to consider a different question. Why do people check out? Some are clear-cut. Many religions do not permit alteration of the body. We found ways to address that concern, such as goggles or earbuds. Likewise, ICON cites privacy and does not want the government to have access to their memories. Again, there are laws in place to restrict that access, as well as encrypting them. For a moment, I stopped listening. As a provisional replica, my memories were unencrypted. Skyler had said that he'd be pawing through my memories today. Did he have access to the whole thing, or only the days since my creation? But what about the individual who is simply bored by the over-easy regularity of their days? What do we do for the citizens of our world who need a sense of risk in order to feel alive? We've seen an upturn in extreme sports that suggests that, in the absence of natural risks, people are starting to create their own. More troubling? Yeah. Violent crime is returning. A voice in the hallway caught my attention. We never heard our neighbors, ever. I turned my head, frowning. The white walls provided a handy reminder that my theming was off. Right, so the reason that I'd never heard my neighbors before was that my theme edited out the sound between apartments. Yay for created privacy? I turned back to the computer, but another quiet voice made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. That wasn't a conversation. That was a command. Well, shit. I knew it was a risk coming here in the first place, that if Icon had someone watching for me at the market, then they would keep an eye on my apartment. I spun out of the chair, grabbing my gun. When the door slammed open, I was already against the wall beside it. A pair of hands. A gun. I waited until the target was in sight and fired. A man fell, the glow from my pulse gun spreading out from the side of his neck to leave him stunned and motionless. A woman dove through low, and my gun kicked again, but the pulse evaporated into smoke as it touched her. She aimed an antique revolver at me, metal, black, and designed to do permanent harm. I dove toward her. My best strategy was to try to control the firearm. The gunshot cracked, but I'd startled her, and the shot went high. Twisting in midair, I spun my pulse gun into the side of her head. As she yelped, her revolver slipped from her grasp. Motion from my right through the open door gave me just enough warning to drop to the floor. Three more people in the hall, all armed, all aiming at me. I snatched her gun from the floor and rolled clear of the door. I needed to get out of here. Another crack of gunfire from the doorway. Something slapped into my left leg. I aimed both guns at the door and fired. Hers bucked in my hand with the recoil, sending the bullet wide. Apparently, they hadn't edited vintage firearms into me, but my body compensated, and the next shots were steadier. I wasn't expecting to hit anyone, but somehow managed to land both shots. One of the bullets tore through a man's chest. A woman fell to the energy pulse. Inside the room, the woman I'd smacked was getting back to her feet. My gun was useless against her, so I fired her weapon. My body had calibrated for the recoil, and the bullet caught her in the shoulder and staggered her. I got to my feet. My left leg felt heavy and wet. Blood painted the white room in bright red spatters and smears. Every part of my being was screaming at me to get out. I limped across the room. With one hand, I fired my attacker's revolver at the window, shattering it. And then, I jumped. I dropped onto the couch of the renewal station, some blocks from my house. Outside the booth, a tiny cleaner bot was industriously cleaning up my trail of blood. At least my attackers couldn't follow me that way. EA. As the couch wrapped around me and fresh nanites flooded into my body, the system placed a call. I ground my teeth, waiting until Skylar appeared. Oh, thank God. He leaned toward the screen. Are you all right? I think I killed someone. I hadn't planned to say that. I planned to yell at him. His jaw tightened, and he nodded. You didn't. She was alive until we lost track of them. You knew? You left me alone there, and you knew they were coming? I shot someone! Blood had been everywhere, but it hadn't been an arterial spray. And how did I know that? Why didn't you warn me that Icon was coming to my apartment? 